There he is, Dayon Henley. Now, now, look, I've given Derek Carr a hard time from time to time of showing up in sleeveless T-shirts whenever he can. Dayon Henley has a lifetime pass. As long as he is <laughs> yeah, right. jacked like that, don't even wear a shirt, dude. Why even bother with the sleeveless T-shirt? Just walk out of your there you door go, Mike. shirtless. And, uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. He's built. Uh, so he's your number one guy. He is. You got three guys in tier one, right. but he's your number one guy. What stands out to you the most about him? Well, I, I think it's, you know, what you're kind of seeing here with the body. We're talking about a, a freak explosive athlete, right? He's right around 230 pounds. You could see he's chiseled. He's ripped. He's dense as hell it's explosive as hell and Mike he's just your you know modern day typical middle linebacker of course very athletic you got to be this day and age right you're gonna have to cover Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield and then oh wait it's Travis Kelsey on one play right and then oh it's a wide receiver screen I got to run out there and get it and do all that so he's an athlete for one that can be very comfortable in all those circumstances I just mentioned let alone he's your typical ball hawking middle linebacker right does everything good from that standpoint I mean, he's aggressive, comes downhill, takes on blocks really well, right? I mean, sideline to sideline, it, it's, it's again, it's 4-5-4, four, four, it's a 1-5-5 five, five split. That, those are special times for somebody at this position right there, you know? And even though he's a little bit smaller than maybe your traditional linebacker, he does a pretty good job getting off blocks, Mike. You know, so we're talking about a high-level, twitchy, explosive athlete who's fearless. And you know me, Mike, that's a big thing with me. I'm big into like that conversation we have. Uh, like linebackers, I, I want zero hesitation. Hey, there's a wall, run through it. They just go, yep, got it. And, and that's what it, and that's what he has. He has a reckless physic physicality about him that I think is very necessary to play that position in the NFL at a high level. Do you think a linebacker goes in round one? No, I do not. I don't. I don't think we're going to see a linebacker in round one this year I think we could start to see the guys like this come off the board around 35 or 40 right and then you could start to see some linebackers in that area but there's no perfect prospect this year at the linebacker position or you know an obvious first round talent no let's look at the safeties now I gave you a hard time yesterday they were the last of the guys you looked at. You start with the quarterbacks, you end with the safeties, kickers, punters, long snappers. Sorry, you don't get evaluated at all. Two Illinois guys. Oh. You throw in Devin Witherspoon. Uh huh. And Chris. Chris is a closet Illinois fan. No, I, exactly. I mean, I, I why didn't anybody tell me that Illinois has some of the craziest mofos I've ever seen on the planet in the secondary? I'd have been rooting for them so hard this year. I mean, you know what I – Devin Witherspoon was my man crush. He's my man crush of the draft. How could he not be, right? But, damn, these guys right here, these are – like, if, if, if he dumped me, these are my other man crushes right here, all right? I mean, wow. Lovey Smith, what he did to recruit some of these guys up to Illinois. Holy cow. I mean, Quan Martin is Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, you know, that kind of guy, Mike, if that makes sense. It's a free safety and a guy that also could play nickel and cover. Maybe even Mike Hilton, if that makes sense. That's what we're talking about here, though. Incredible ball hawking skills in the back end, can cover in the slot. And again, you know me, I'm a sucker for psychos, all right? And he's a psycho. He runs into walls and whoever and has no idea that he's 194 pounds. Nobody told him. He thinks he's 254. So, yeah, him and his buddy on the other side, Sidney Brown, whose twin brother is a top five running back in, in my list there, he's a similar way but a little bit bigger and a more powerful element. So Quan Martin's a psycho that's a little more coverage based. Quan Martin, I mean, uh, Quan Martin's a psycho that's coverage based. Sidney Brown's a little bit more of a psycho that – has a little more physicality and maybe run game base. But damn, to me, they're the, the two best safeties in this draft, Mike. Well, we've made it clear you like psychos and big asses. You Which know heaven that. is better? Psycho <laughs> heaven or big ass heaven? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, and then here's the brothers. Uh, here's the twins. There's the, the, the safety on the left, the running back on the right. Um, really impressive athletes. They're really good. You know, But safety's a different position in the NFL than, than how we grew up, Mike, right? It's not. You know, the Ronnie Lotts of the world and all that, they're, they're, not, they're linebackers now, right? The guy we just talked about, Dayon Henley, back in the day would have been like a strong safety. Now he's a linebacker, right? And 
you know, our, 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 our traditional safeties now are becoming a little bit smaller, faster, and coverage-based because of, again, I think the versatility of offenses. It's the spread. It's, oh, it's power run game, so you need to tackle. But the next play, again, McCaffrey's in the slot or George Kittle's in the slot. we got to have a guy that can cover him too and play that game. So that's where the position's changed. Uh, I don't think there's a first-round safety in the class either, Mike. I think another reason why the position's changed yeah. – Think of the intimidation factor that used to apply in the secondary. Sure. Can't do that anymore. Yeah. There's no value to that anymore. The Andre Waters, the Chuck Cecil. Yeah. Knock right? your head off, guys. You, right. You, 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 you kid, it's not part of the game anymore. Yeah. So that guy does become a linebacker because that mentality is better suited to being closer to the ball. That's a very good point, Mike. I totally agree with you there. You know, but that that's where, you know, the games change in these positions where, you know, the old school middle linebacker Harry Carson, right, that we grew up with or, you know, those type of guys, smash mouth, whatever. There's a few of those, right? But more than let more times or not, it's more like Nick Bolton and Willie Gay and that kind of guy now. You know, two thirty can fly and run all over the field because yeah, he's tough and he can play smash mouth, right? There's some, you know, some bad things as far as, yeah, he can get blocked or moved because he's not huge, but we got to worry about read option and RPO and wide receiver screen to Jalen Waddle out there. So you better be able to have, you know, go-go rockets up your butt to get out there and make that play. And I think, you know, to your point and what I'm saying is, is why those two positions have changed. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.